Greetings. This is a little bit of a different episode uh, this time. I'm actually going to be reviewing seven different black inks on five different types of paper. So we're going to do a comprehensive review of different black inks. Um, the criteria for which inks to include really are very simple. It has to be a black ink, not a dark gray. It's an ink that's advertised, sold, uh, and represents itself as nothing other than a black ink. The other criteria, it has to be an ink that I own. So that's really what it comes down to. So I have seven different black inks. I feel they're a good representation. Uh, three of them are from the same manufacturer, um, but um, I think it's a good cross section of the black inks that are available. If one of your favorites is not included, I am sorry. Um, I'm also going to be testing them on five different types of paper. So in terms of the paper, I'm going to be testing all the inks on Rhodia paper. I'm going to be testing all the inks on cheap copy paper from Walgreens. I'm going to be testing on Tome, Tome, Tomoe River paper. I'm going to be testing on index cards and finally on this Field Notes notebook. So I think, again, that gives a pretty good cross-section of papers as well. In terms of pen, what I'm going to do is I went out and bought seven Visconti Homo Sapiens pens. So each ink gets uh, inked up in its own Visconti Homo Sapiens pen. Um, on second thought, that's going to be a little pricey to do that. So uh, in, uh, forgive me, instead of using a Visconti uh, Homo Sapiens, I'm going to be using a Wing Sung 9159. So each ink is inked up in its own Wing Sung 9159. Aside from the color, this is the exact same pen, exact same nib, etc. Uh, the reason I chose this pen, it's a cheap pen. These cost only about $2 a piece. The nib and feed can be removed easily for cleaning, and the pen can be eyedroppered. So just to make it easy on myself, I wanted to use the exact same pen um, for the for each ink. I did not want to make a, a difficult exercise for me to clean up afterwards. So uh, a, a pen that can be eyedroppered, as well as a nib and feed removed for cleaning, was important, as well as being inexpensive. These are each a fine nib, which is not probably not the most ideal nib for this exercise, but. Uh, be that as it may, uh, that's what we'll, we'll work with here. Um, uh, also, what I did was I removed the nibs and feeds from each of these pens. They were brand new. I removed the nibs and feeds. I cleaned them. I dried them. I put them back in. I then eyedropper filled each of the pens with a bit of the ink in question. And so each pen uh, it was treated differently. You may be wondering why I'm not using a dip pen for this exercise. I really did not want to do that because I do think you get a slightly different effect in a dipped pen than in a fountain pen. And since most of you will be using these in fountain pens, I really wanted this to be as close to a good test and reasonable exercise for what you folks might experience um, at home. So let's go through each of the inks first that I'm gonna test and we'll talk a little bit about cost. So this is in order from least expensive to most expensive. So the cheapest ink is Noodler's Heart of uh, Darkness. Um, this uh, is uh, four and a half ounces, which is 133 milliliters, uh, costs $19. That works out to 14 cents per milliliter. Um, and the reason why I count this one as the cheapest, even though all the noodlers are the same price, with this particular one, you get a free pen. So the cheap cost plus the free pen would make this the least expensive ink. So that's Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Like all Noodler's inks, 14 cents per milliliter. The next is Noodler's X Feather. This is somewhat of a specialized ink, generally designed for working on cheap papers, newsprint, things like that. It's an ink that doesn't feather, so it has some special characteristics. Uh, I'll do a more comprehensive review of this ink subsequently, but it is a black ink. The next ink is Noodler's Old Manhattan Black. This is the only one of the bunch that is not a widely available ink. It's an exclusive to Fountain Pen Hospital in New York, so you either have to buy it from them at their store or you can order it online or uh, mail order uh, from them, but it is only available from one vendor. This is the only ink of the bunch that is not a widely available ink. 
So that takes it, uh, that's done with our Noodles ink. So three of the seven are from Noodles. The next is Diamine Jet Black. This uh, costs a little bit more. All the Noodles inks were 14 cents a milliliter. This, if you buy it in the normal size 80 milliliter bottle, which I do not have, I only have the small bottle, but if you buy it in the normal 80 milliliter bottle, it works out to 19 cents per milliliter for Diamine Jet Black. Next is Mont Blanc Mystery Black. This comes in the standard uh, 60 milliliter Mont Blanc bottle. It works out to, now we're making kind of a big price jump here, goes all the way from 19 cents for the Diamine to 36 cents a milliliter for the Mont Blanc uh, Mystery Black. The next one is uh, Je Herban Pearl Noir, which is 40 cents a milliliter, comes in these 30 milliliter uh, Je Herban bottle. And finally, the last one is the most expensive at 44 cents a milliliter is Aurora Black, which comes in a 45 milliliter bottle. So that's each of the inks we're going to be talking about. First up is on Rhodia paper and we'll see how each of them do. So first up is Noodler's Heart of Darkness. So this is uh, Heart of Darkness from uh, Noodler's. And let's see how that looks. Okay, one thing that we have that we can compare our inks against for blackness, this is what a sort of standard black card. It has both a matte side and a shiny side. This is used in uh, photography uh, as a standard for blackness. So we're just gonna, we can just keep that there as a comparison for um, uh, how black our inks, uh, our inks are. So this is our first one up, again, Noodler's Heart of Darkness, um, and that's uh, pretty black. It's one of my uh, one of my favorites. I've said before, and a very very nice black ink. Uh, next up is another Noodler's ink, which is Noodler's uh, X Feather. So this is X Feather, also from Noodler's, and. Let's do a little bit of scribble scribble with this one. Also a very, very black ink. I can't see much of a difference in blackness uh, for these two. So um, I'm going to comment on sort of how these look because it may not necessarily photograph um, uh, uh, all of them uh, uh, perfectly in terms of um, in terms of how they look. So again, another, the last of the three Noodler's inks is Old Manhattan. And again, uh, this is Noodlers. This is also a very, very black ink. Um, looks a little blacker than X Feather, very comparable to Heart of Darkness, at least to my naked eye. Next up is, um, is uh, the, uh, we're gonna do the Diamine. And that is the Diamine Jet Black. Um, and this one looks quite black. This is, um, this might be the blackest, blackest yet actually, but uh, let's, uh, Let's see how that goes. Next is Mont Blanc Mystery Black. Okay, at least on this paper, this is seemingly has a bit, oh, I got a bit of paper stuck in the tines there, so hold on a second, let me clean that up. This one is coming off as a very, very dark purple, almost, so there's 
I don't, I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but definitely compared to the others, this one almost has a, has a very, very dark purple. I mean, looking at it by itself, it definitely looks black, but when you can start comparing it to the others, it almost has a, has a purplish tinge to it. Um, next up is uh, J. Herban's Pearl Noir. And um, that looks pretty black as well. So on this paper, I would have to say the Heart of Darkness. Oh, I'm sorry, we're not uh, we're not done yet. We have one more to go, which is the Aurora Black. Again, very, very black looking. Very, very black. Um, so I would say the Aurora Black, the Old Manhattan, and the Heart of Darkness, to my naked eye, look the blackest, um, if you're going strictly by blackness. Um, let's. I'm not gonna do things like pour water on it or anything like that, because to be honest with you, that's not a typical use case for most people. What is a typical use case for most people is just sort of smearing it. Um, and on this paper, at least, um, they all seem to be doing okay. Even X Feather, which is notorious for having a long dry time, on this Rhodia paper actually is doing pretty well. So they've all been at least a minute or so, and none of them are, are smearing on this paper, which again is much more of a typical um, uh, uh, use case for most people. So like I said, I'm not gonna bother pouring water on it or, or doing anything like, uh, like that. So that's uh, on the Rhodia paper. Let's take a look at the Tom Tomoe River uh, paper. So first up is Heart of Darkness. So we have oops, got a little uh, paper fragment in my nib here. Let me just fix that. Um, I could see right away on this paper, um, it, it definitely is looking a little blacker even than it did on the um, on the other uh, uh, paper, on the Rhodia paper. But let's see. So the next up is Noodler's X Feather. Got, again, I got some paper fragments stuck in my nib here, okay. Again, very black. All of these inks seem to flow, have decent flow properties, especially, and even, even I spelled noodle is wrong here. Got an extra O there. Um, uh, even on the, even on uh, from these very very cheap uh, cheap uh, cheap pens. Uh, let's next up is Noodler's Old Manhattan. And again, very very dark, very dark here. So the Old Manhattan. Looking very, very dark there. Um, next up is Diamond Jet Black. Uh, wow, that, that's looking very good here as well. Um, I'm a Tomoe River paper is very nice, and you can see I think they're all they're all looking 
I think I'm a little more impressed on this paper than I am was on the Rodia paper, although they all look good on the Rodia paper as well. This is Mont Blanc Mystery Black. So this is looking blacker on the Tomei, uh, the Tomoe River paper than it did on the Rhodia. It's not quite, it's a, only a vague hint of the purple that I was getting on the Rhodia paper with this. Um, uh, um, I, I can only see that here. Uh, I, I was definitely getting a purple U to the Mont Blanc ink on the Rhodia paper. Let's do J. Herban. Pearl Noir. Well, that's looking very dark as well. And one more. Finally, the Aurora Black. Okay, um, to my eye, if I had to pick a favorite here, I would say probably a tie between, wow, they all look very good here. Uh, you know, the Diamine is looking a little sheeny to me, um, and, you know, that's not necessarily a negative, but it looks like the dye mine's picking up a bit of sheen on this T Tomoe River paper, which you may or may not like. So that's definitely got a sheen. The Mont Blanc is looking nice and flat, not seeing too much of that purple hue that I was seeing on the um, on the Rhodia paper. Uh, but in terms of blackness, I think they all look equally good. I have to be honest with you. I'm not seeing, I mean, they. The, maybe the Old Manhattan is the blackest here. Somewhere, I'd say it's a tie between the Heart of Darkness and the old Manhattan in terms of blackness. Uh, again, not sure how much of this is getting picked up on the on the camera. Now let's look at smearing. Um, they're all doing well. Um, the Aurora might be smearing a little, but that's the newest of, of them all, so I'm gonna cut that one some slack. So I'm not seeing, again, X Feather has this reputation for being a slow drying ink, and even on this paper, I'm not seeing smearing. So again, I could probably pour water on these and do all sorts of stuff, but how often is that really gonna happen in real life? This is much more, to me, uh, smearing with your hands is a much more reasonable uh, 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 test to see what's going on. So um, again, they all did um, pretty well on the Tomoe River paper. So let's now go to cheap copy paper, and this is just literally cheap copy paper that was bought uh, bought in uh, in uh, in Walgreens. Um, and so let's go first with uh, Heart of Darkness. Trying to keep the same order here on each of these. Hopefully, that's what I'm doing. These nibs are definitely not as smooth on this cheap copy paper as on the other papers, and the ink is not—it's not the ink's just not laying down as nice on this paper as it is on the others, which is. I guess what you'd expect. Um, let uh, us now go to the Noodler's X Feather. So this is a paper that you might expect to see some feathering with the exception of the X Feather. So the Heart of Darkness is not really feathering. Um, the X feather isn't chewing too bad either, so I'm not seeing much in the way of feathering with any of these, either of these, frankly. Um, although, let's see what happens over a little bit of time. Let's go to Noodler's Old Manhattan. Okay, this definitely, and I'm not sure how much was getting picked up on the camera, but I'm definitely seeing some feathering, considerably more feathering on the old Manhattan than I am on um, the X Feather of the Heart of Darkness. Uh, let's go to the Diamine Jet Black.
so far none of these are looking as black as they did on the other papers so this this cheap copy paper is definitely having an impact on the blackness if you will next up is Mont Blanc Okay, this is definitely feathering a little bit, and I'm definitely picking up a little bit of the purple, like we were talking about before. Um, next up, J. Herban. And last up, Aurora. Okay, so on Aurora is feathering quite a bit, but it is, at least in my view, clearly the blackest black on this paper. So as you might expect, the X feather and the Heart of Darkness are feathering the least. Uh, Diamond Jet Black is doing a pretty good job of not feathering, but it's not the darkest. Um, if I had to pick, but the, the Aurora Black is the darkest here, clearly, uh, at least from what I could tell, but it is feathering. The Diamine is not quite as dark as the Aurora on this paper, but it doesn't feather quite as bad. So on this paper, uh, the best compromise between say feathering and blackness, I would say is probably the Diamine. Um, uh, the Mont Blanc is clearly not the black, is noticeably not as black as the others on this. Um, and like I said, and the Aurora is probably the worst in terms of uh, feathering. The X Feather is not a bad compromise either. The X Feather is obviously not really feathering very much. Not quite as black as the Diamine or the Aurora though. Um, Heart of Darkness actually though could make a run for it as well. Not too bad either. So, you know, you're not, not a lot of good choices here. Uh, let's see. Uh, in terms of smearing, they're all they're all pretty good. So so far we haven't had anything, any paper ink combination that I would regard as having dry time issues. Next up, index cards. So first we have Noodler's Heart of Darkness. Looking pretty black there, as I would expect. Next up after that is X Feather. Also looking black as well. So far, not seeing much in the way of feathering at all on this index card. Noodler's Old Manhattan is up next. After that is Diamine Jet Black. I heard uh, a lot of people say Noodles Old Manhattan is supposed to be like the blackest black. I mean, it's it's very black, true, but you know, not appreciably more than any of these other ones I've been testing, with the probably exception of the Mont Blanc. That's the one that's been the, the biggest disappointment so far, I think, in terms of blackness anyway. But Aurora Black has been very black as well, which is, again, what you'd expect. That's got uh, a well-deserved reputation. Here's the Mont Blanc. I'm not seeing too much in the way of that purple tinge that I was seeing before with the Mont Blanc, but it's just coming off like a very, very dark gray here. So far, color-wise, that's that's been my biggest disappointment. 
Uh, here's the J Herban. And finally, the Aurora. Um, so in terms of black color, um, Heart of Darkness is looking really good here. Um, so is X Feather. The Old Manhattan looks good, but not as those other, not as much as the other two. The Diamond and the Mount Blanc both seem to be trying hard to be black, but are coming off as a very, very dark gray here. The J Herban looks okay not necessarily much better than any of the noodles inks and again we're talking a huge price difference and again the aurora is looking very very black very black indeed but again you're talking triple the price between uh, the noodles and the aurora okay last paper we're going to try is this field notes notebook so first up is uh noodler's heart of darkness I have to say this paper is actually quite smooth and nice. This is this is pretty nice paper in this uh, in this field notes uh, notebook. Next up is Noodler's X Feather. Um, that's definitely darker than Heart of Darkness uh, on this on this paper. Uh, anyway, uh, next up is Noodler's Old Manhattan. Finally, Diamine Jet Black. Oh, not finally, we have a couple more to go, but Diamine. Again, I'm impressed with this paper on this Field Notes notebook. It's actually smooth and, and pretty nice and seems to be taking the fountain pen quite well. Here comes the Mont Blanc. And that was the that was the Mont Blanc. And next is the J. Herban Pearl Noir. And finally is the Aurora Black. Okay, uh, at least to my eye here, the Mont Blanc again is exhibiting a lot of this, pur it looks like a grayish purple compared to the others, not nearly as dark. The two darkest ones here, uh, to my eye, seem to be the Aurora and the X Feather, with the J Herban probably close behind. Although the dye mine looks pretty good too. The two, the ones that are probably the least black here, at least to my eye, are the Old Manhattan and definitely the Mont Blanc. So, um, okay, that's all the samples that I am doing. So, if I had to pick winners and losers here, which I'm not necessarily inclined to do, but based on what I'm seeing here, um, a couple of conclusions. The Mont Blanc is probably my least favorite in terms of color. If you're looking for something that is just straight up, pure, undisputed, 
dark black, like black cat in a power failure kind of black. Um, it's not going to be the Mont Blanc. That's definitely not one you want. You want to stick to probably the Dime Line actually surprised me how much I liked it. Um, I went into this saying Heart of Darkness was probably my favorite black ink. Um, the Aurora can certainly make it a run for its money, although the Aurora is triple the price. So that you need to just factor that in um, from a cost factor. So from a cost, from an overall black ink perspective in terms of just overall blackness, the Aurora might actually win. The, um, uh, the, the, the one thing that did surprise me was on the Tomoe River paper, the Diamond Jet Black had sheen to it. So if you are not looking for sheen, you want to stay away from that. The Aurora came in nice and flat black. The others actually looked very black on here. Even the Mont Blanc, which I was not a big fan of, looks very black on the Tomoe River paper. So if you're writing on this kind of paper, the Mont Blanc will, will do you well. Um, um, uh, again, the Noodle Zinks, though, at a fraction of the cost of the others, really held their own. So um, I guess I'm not going to pass any kind of final judgment. I'll leave that up to uh, you fine folks. Um, I hope you found this exercise somewhat uh, useful. Um, if it uh, was, please um, subscribe to this channel. We have lots of good pen and ink reviews uh, coming up. So until next time, I bid you goodbye. And I'll see you later. Thank you very much.